What's going on, everybody? Bill Mack here with another edition of Pro Wrestling Unleashed. I am glad to be bringing you another video, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it. This is for uh, this is for this uh, past Raw, uh, August the twenty eighth, two thousand seventeen, which we saw uh, a meeting of the big dogs. Uh, John Cena and Roman Reigns was kind of a highlight of this uh, episode, and some surprises um, here. A new champion was crowned. So uh, let's get right on into the uh, to the results. Um, we have first a battle royal uh, for the number one contendership to take on the Intercontinental title. This happens because we see the Miz in the ring complaining to Kurt Angle about how it's not shown the prestige it should. And Kurt says, you're right. So it'll be you'll be defending. Uh, we'll have a number one contenders battle royal tonight. And whoever wins, We'll be facing you next week for that title. So it comes out. <clears throat> Battle Royal is pretty good. Um, a lot of going in and out. Um, we see Jeff Hardy end up winning it as he throws out uh, basically Jason Jordan, who I thought was going to be the pick, knowing what the uh, what the storyline has been with trying to elevate Jason Jordan. But Jeff Hardy gets the pick, gets the win, and uh, we see because Jason was able. He ended up when we saw. Uh, the Mistraw is trying to eliminate Jason. Jason turns it on and throws them out. And as he's throwing them out, looks over, Matt just immediately, I mean, Jeff, excuse me, immediately eliminates him and gets it. So now we look to see Jeff Hardy. Maybe this is a singles push. Jeff may be getting in a feud maybe with the Miz. So it remains to be seen on what they're going to do about that. <clears throat> Up next, we have a cruiserweight matchup, which we had Enzo Amore taking on uh, Noam, Noam Dar. Um, Manoa and Dar pretty much controlled this matchup. Enzo really wasn't doing too much, just a lot of talking, and uh, basically Enzo ended up defeating um, defeating uh, Mardar, which shouldn't come as no surprise. And we see Neville talk about how you know in uh, in the back about how Enzo wasn't really competition, and you know he had, that he said he himself will stay cruiserweight champion forever, which is the way their booking looks. That may be the case. We see Brock and Lesnar come out. Um, Brock Lesnar come out and Paul Heyman come out. And they basically cut a promo on on Braun Strowman and basically Brock defeating Braun Strowman at no mercy. So I look forward to this matchup. This is about two monsters. you got the Beast and you got the Monster Among Men. This looks to be a good one. So I thought that maybe Brock would get over on Braun this matchup because Braun's had the best of Brock at a pay-per-view and last week, so it just, just was a promo this week um, for Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Up next, we have a matchup with Cesaro taking on Seth Rollins, which they end up splitting it up one and one, one and one, like they fought before. Um, you know, Sheamus tried to interfere in this match, which kind of like it was the last time they faced each other. Uh, Sheamus tried to interfere, and we saw Dean Ambrose kind of get in the way, and then um, Cesaro, though, he was able to hit the European uppercut and pin Rollins. So Sheamus and Ambrose end up still fighting each other, and which leads directly into the next matchup. So we had one half of the champions versus the old champions. Now we have the other half. So now we have a matchup with Dean Ambrose and uh, Seth Rollins ended up uh, interfering in this matchup. And this basically allowed Ambrose to hit the dirty deeds on Sheamus and then get the win. So it kind of reversed itself backwards in this matchup. So I guess this is going to be a running feud with them up until the next pay-per-view like it was beforehand. So good to see them not going nowhere, just trying to keep a long, meaningful feud in, um, with, the champ with the former champions. Up next, we have Emma. And poor Emma, she, she cuts promos every week about give her a chance. She needs a chance. Come on, Kurt, give her a chance. She just can't win. And then and she started the women's revolution. All these hashtags she's doing. But she ends up defeating Mickey James with a roll up and Emma come out to do some, oh, some I don't know what, it changed her tune and her music again, so it is what it is, folks. I I'm not really too sure of the understanding of that. Um, then we have Kurt Angle come out um, right before the end. Uh, not the not the last of the mat not the last of the night, but near the end of the show. And he calls out and he makes official that J John Cena is taking on Roman Reigns at No Mercy. And this, you know, I didn't, I thought this should have been a match either when John was leaving or somewhere near the end, not immediately when he comes on there because Roman Reigns is supposed to be 
the big dog Garaw, who John Cena is supposed to pass the torch to. But these two cut promos going back, and they used a lot of their real-life stuff. I know they said that the promo, when I read it, was a shoot and wasn't real. I mean, was a shoot and it wasn't scripted, but they claimed it was scripted. But folks, you and I, we heard that promo. If you heard it and watched it, or if you didn't, all I did was basically speak the truth, what the internet wrestling community, what you and I as fans see actually what's going on between who Roman Reigns is and who John Cena is. But they claimed it was scripted, so... But they cut a really promo, a big, deep promo with each other. Kind of like when the Miz and Cena went back and forth, which John does this with everybody. He cuts these hard-nosed, real promos um, against whoever he's facing. And, and, you know, because he did this because Roman said he didn't have to prove to anybody. He didn't have to sign the contract. So by John coercing him and talking uh, this promo, cutting his promo deep to Roman, Roman ends up signing it. So... That's how that basically ends up. So uh, <clears throat> we see a matchup with Cena and Reigns taking on the club. They come out there and interfere after this. The club ends up losing, of course. Roman Reigns gets the spear to get the win. So we know he's going put, uh, being put over on here. Up next, we have Elias, and Elias is singing a song, and he's talking trash about Memphis. So plug spot here, whenever... We saw at the beginning of the show, you know, Booker T didn't, was not able to join the Raw broadcast as because of the fact that he wasn't, he was stuck, he was in Houston with his family, you know, Houston, and uh, many prayers sent to the people of Houston and Texas as they went through the, the hurricane, and so they're going through that right now, so Booker wasn't able to make it. So by Booker not being able to make it, we had Jerry Lawler, which was kind of odd, but also, folks, Raw was coming from Memphis, so you knew, you just knew every time something with a hometown like that, somebody involved was going to happen, and we knew Jerry was going to be involved. I knew he was. For the moment, I saw him like, Jerry's going to be involved with something tonight. Sure enough, Elias starts running down and singing a song about the people in Memphis, and then Jerry Lawler gets up, and I'm thinking, oh, man, come on, Jerry, you, you don't need to be getting in that ring after all you've been through, but then he says that, He's going to bring out South Paul Res Regional Wrestling's uh, impressive Pelvis Wesley, which we all know to be Heath Slater since that's his gig now. Apparently, he's got nothing else to do but be dressed up as a fake Elvis Presley on a fake wrestling show, uh, a southern wrestling show. So he comes out and dancing around and everything, and then Elias ends up beating him up and we knew this was coming. I knew I, as soon as I saw Heath Slater come down the aisle, like he's going to get beat up. There's Elias is just not going to handle him making fun and joking around. And sure enough, that's what happens. Is he ends up beating uh, up um, Pelvis Wesley and leaving him in the ring, and he walks out. So we knew I knew that was going to happen. It just made sense. But we have last but not least, this is the Raw Women's uh, Championship match. Remember, Alexa said that she was going to challenge Sasha this week for it. And, you know, I was, like, very apprehensive. Like, why are they doing another Raw with another title match like this and the women's title matches on Raw? And it and it, would, it was without recourse. They ended up, basically, Sasha Banks ended up losing the title back to Bliss. Bliss hits DDT. She's the new champion once again. And, I mean... She was telling, cutting a promo at the beginning, saying every time Sasha gets the title, she says Sasha is very unsuccessful in defending it the first time. This, lo and behold, Sasha's won the belt four times, had four unsuccessful title defenses in her first title defense. So maybe the creative events has kind of wavered on her a little bit. Maybe something's going on with that. I don't quite know, but... Needless to say, Sasha gets the belt, Sasha loses the belt. So, Bliss gets the title. So, we see basically Nia Jax go out there, and Nia held Alexa on her shoulders and stuff, and then she ends up ends up um, beating her up, um, and, and Alexa's laying down, and we see Nia take the belt. So, Nia's got, she's waiting on her title shot, remember? She told Bliss if she gets the title back, she wanted a shot. So maybe this is a feud. Now, I personally 
would have kept it on Sasha and had her feud uh, another maybe another month with Alexa. Nia's not ready for it. Nia Jax is very un. She's very. She's not very. Um, how do you say it? She's not very um, pre prepared to wrestle. I mean, she's she's been a liability. She's a liability. She's been injuring. Um, she hurt Charlotte a while when she first came in. Then she turned around and hurt Bailey. Bailey's out for quite a while now. I don't know if it's a good idea to have a feud. You better not, you know, Alexa Bliss is one of the, you know, the big, biggest popular ones in the females, even in the women's division, even though she's a heel. So you better hope Nia don't injure her. I'm surprised she's even getting that shot after she's been in danger and in, in dangerous in the ring with hurting people. So, but that's how it basically ended was uh, Nia Jax holding the belt over Alexa and posing with, uh, posing with it. As the show went off the air. So those are the things happen. We see Cena. The highlights between Cena and Roman Reigns. Cut promos on each other. We see Alexa Bliss become uh, Raw Women's Champion once again. We see the tag team matches between the or singles matches between the two tag teams. Uh, between Seth Rollins and, and Ambrose and Sheamus and Cesaro. We also see a... The Battle Royal to determine, and Jeff Hardy becomes the number one contender to take on Miz next week. So, hopefully, Raw is going to be good next week. I can't wait to see on what happens between Jeff and Miz. And if anything happens, any news breaks, then I'll get it to you. But I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Pro Wrestling Unleashed. This is Bill Mack. Until next time, saying, take it easy. Yeah.